of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because, I mean, your school experience was a bit If You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, which is four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think you should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, so teaching them the the the, the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out of it as well. Just going <laughs> like. See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, the, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? To be a or, humanist. Or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that you know teaching them the love for learning. So yeah. you know get them up to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas he, he was thinking <laughs> freak him out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Woo, what? Right? But it's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's say, not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher a on Mars. Why not? Because what do you mean, why not? Why did it? How did it get there? But we're always sending like rubbish out there and that. It's like not dishwashers. What you think that the council take it away and they go? Where can we put it? Well, the uh, the tip's full. We, uh, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who I don't know was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that. Um, he did it wrong because he did it on like Boxing Day, and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't sure. they, on Boxing yeah. Day? Sure. So it didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, Who that, was? Little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars, and it, it, it got. Probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't open. But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, it's all, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So, ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them, tight space. You don't want to, but who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Uh, out of the Earth's atmosphere. So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... How many people? <laughs> Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right, say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it. So one, to, one... one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing They haven't got up, a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. But all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs nothing that ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in fairy pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, all right, then, here's a different question. Go on, then. Would it be better um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst yeah. we're here? Because I, I put that in my diary the other day, that, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. There's speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. Cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not, not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying I is think it's... There's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still a millions handful, of people a handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo yeah. Loads of people are living longer, and yeah. that's, that's a problem. So, so you feel that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex just into, wandering say, out, wandering London, around. just having wandering around, just picking people off? That's what... Just, just you know, just sort of random and that, because I, I don't know... I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that, but all I'm saying is I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go, on. Oh, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And, and Enora's been had her head bitten off by a... Whatever. I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest, which yeah. is, we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. You just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or, <laughs> do you know what I 
you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking. Have you ever been in a physical fight? Um, once that I can remember. It was over a, over a woman. Well, <laughs> a girl. I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because, like, it's hassle, isn't it? Right? Relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And uh, my mate, he really liked her. And uh, I, I didn't sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff. Right? And uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco. <laughs> and... Um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on. And I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it. And she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this, right? Can't, uh, you know, what's up with you? It's a hole, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. Right. So she's crying her eyes out, so it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying? Right. In the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right? And uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know? I'm saying, what are you on about? So you're, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven -year yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. <laughs> yeah. Cut it out. <laughs> Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> But sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. Ah, get out of my face. <laughs> oh. so I, I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved? And I'm like, <laughs> why, are yeah. Yeah. why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Oh, wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like someone from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. Why are you talking about two seven-year-olds in a toilet? I just, uh, so you put, you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What were you wearing? Know, football boots? Just... <laughs> how, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so got a hole in it. So, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got head, sort of arm locks and head A little bit locks? of wrestling and sho shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, yeah. right. and it chipped and what yeah. have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, oh god, there's a copper here talking, and it, like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions that's, are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. But did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant.